So first question is why should it work? This is a beautiful molecule. The pharmacodynamics of this molecule are awesome. So it blocks D2, like all antipsychotics, but then it has the sort of like the perfect profile to be an antidepressant. So we go back to our hot receptor, 5-HT7, sorry, 5-HT7 antagonist. It also blocks and antagonizes 5-HT2. And then, like buspar and like flazodone and like bordeoxetine, it is a partial agonist at 5-HT1. So it, it seems like it should have these mood properties. Um, additionally, it has almost no affinity for the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor, so it's less likely to produce orthostasis like risperidone does, and it has no significant affinity for H1 and M1 receptors. Um, what's that? Weight gain issue. Huh? Weight gain issue. No weight gain. That's right. That's yeah, the this is an awesome drug. So the question is, does it work? And I'm not going to talk about the studies for schizophrenia. Um, I'm just going to talk about the studies for bipolar depression because it's now been approved for bipolar depression both as monotherapy and as an augmenting agent. You mean and bipolar depression is for major depression and bipolar? Bipolar depression, not for unipolar depression. Bipolar. bipolar depression. But we don't have much, right? What do we have that's FDA approved for bipolar depression? We've got Seroquel, we've got the lanzapine cloxin combination that no one prescribes. I mean, we like, so, so this is cool. So the studies are impressive. Um, there are true differences um, versus placebo on the Madras. Um, and um, there are also really significant differences in re response and remission rates. Um, the, we use number needed to treat a lot in research. The number needed to treat is five here is great you know like most of our antidepressants are like 8 to 10 so this is cool what's awesome about this drug and I'll, I'll, try, I'll try not to get too excited but um, the studies are very well done so there's one study there the two big studies are in, in the American Journal of Psychiatry um, there, there was an augmentation study um, which led to its approval for augmentation now it's the only antipsychotic that's ever been tested and shown to work as an, as an augmenting agent for, for bipolar depression. They just sort of created a new label for indication. Um, Augment, and augmenting uh, a mood stabilizer or augmenting an antidepressant? Mood stabilizer. So here's the study. They've got one arm, which is um, lorazidone plus lithium. They've got one arm, which is lorazidone plus Depakote. And they've got one arm, which is you know lithium or Depakote plus placebo. Mm -hmm. And lorazidone, when combined with either lithium or Depakote robustly beats placebo as an augmenting agent, right? Um, it was a really cool study to do. Um, probably the most remarkable thing about this study is the dropout rate. So what's the dropout rate for most bipolar studies? 40%? Yeah, higher. 56. Yeah, so, you know, like a lot of bipolar studies, the completer rate is 20, 25%. The famous studies that led to Circle's approval, the Boulder studies, in those studies, the completion rate was 50 to 60 percent, right? That's not very good. In this study, 80 percent of people completed. In all the studies that I saw for, for um, this medication, it was between 70 and 80 percent, and placebo was around 80 percent for completion. So this is really a well-tolerated drug. Um, you know, like any antipsychotic, there is EPS, there is akathisia, um, but it's like geodon. It has, in almost all the studies we've done so far, it has no significant weight gain um, and no significant effects on other metabolic processes. You know, glycemic markers don't go crazy. Triglycerides look cool. So, again, it looks like the profile of geodon, but without the QT prolongation. Um, and then, again, going back to subscales on the madras. Um, this is not a drug like Seroquel that just knocks people out. If you look at the Madras, um, seven out of ten scales, seven out of ten of the subscales separated from placebo. And that's you know for both the monotherapy and augmentation studies. So these core depressive items like sadness, reported sadness, apparent sadness, lassitude, tension and anxiety, all those really meaningfully separated. It does produce some somnolence, which was therapeutic. It separated out on difficulty with sleep. Um, and also, it produced improvements in functional outcome. I'm just loving this drug. So the other thing that's cool, and then I'll talk about some of the disadvantages and then how to use it, because I think this is a medication we should be using, um, is that it also seems to have a relatively rapid response. So um, it's separated out beginning in week three. Good for, for a mood drug.
drugged. Um, and even though these were um, internationally conducted studies, most of the sites and most of the patients were here in the U.S. Uh, I'm not normally patriotic, but I do think that some of the, uh, <laughs> some of the foreign <laughs> studies are <laughs> dubious. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's a bummer about this medication? Not much. The cost. Um, it's only been studied for bipolar 1 patients, not bipolar 2 patients. Which brings me back to what's awesome about this drug is they actually included rapid cyclers. I thought that was pretty real world with them. Um, it does raise prolactin a little bit, but much less so than risperidone or Zyprexa or Haldol. All right. How do we use it if you're pumped up? And did I mention that I'm getting kickbacks from this company? Explain <laughs> um, but Yeah, no. So um, it's like Geodon in that it should be dosed with food. Um, don't eat fat in it. Um, and it should be dosed with the meal or within 30 minutes of the meal. If you don't dose it with food, you lose either half to two-thirds of absorption. Usually taken at night because it does have sedating properties. And then um, the dose range, I forgot to mention, um, it's approved from 20 to 120 milligrams. Um, and it does not seem to have superiority at higher doses, which is kind of nice. It also doesn't really seem to have significantly more side effects at higher doses. Um, if you're titrating, and I'll email this to you so you have a schedule, but the schedules that they used in the studies were for the monotherapy study, you start at 20 for day one and two, you go to 40 for day three and four, you go to 60 for day five and six. That was for augmentation. They just hung out at 60, and then they adjusted by 20 milligrams each week, up or down, depending on how the patient was doing. Um, the only difference for the monotherapy study was that instead of stopping at 60, on day seven, they went to 80, and then they hung out there for a week, and then you adjust in increments of 20 milligrams every week, um, if you need to adjust. 